Okay, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thank you, um, Professor Kwok, uh, for the introduction. And um, I'm going to talk about uh, central series retinopathy, the current management. So these are my financial disclosures. As you know, CSC is quite a common condition, especially in uh, middle-aged uh, men. And um, so this condition is characterized by serious uh, detachment of the neurosensory retina, usually at the posterior pole. And with the use of intercyanine green and geography and um, enhanced depth imaging OCT, we now know that the primary pathology in CSC is likely to be in the choroidal circulation. And in the late phase of the ICG and geography, you can see dilated choroidal vasculature in the early phase with um, late phase showing diffuse choroidal vascular hyperpermeability is shown here. So the pathogenesis of CSC basically is because of a hyperdynamic choroidal circulation and choroidal vascular hyperpermeability, and you get a thickened choroid. And this will then cause an elevated hydrostatic pressure of the choroid, causing breakdown of the RPE barrier uh, or pigment epithelial detachment. And so here you can see a pigment epithelial detachment or a br um, very minute break in the RPE uh, tight junctions, and you can get a serious retinal detachment. So with the use of the spectral domain um, enhanced depth imaging, we can see that patients with CSC will have this very thickened choroid. And here you can see the serious um, retinal detachment. With uh, on-face OCT, you, we can also sometimes see um, multiple uh, areas of uh, PED as well as um, uh, fibrinous uh, um, extrudate collected within the um, subretinal fluid. With the use of uh, PDT, we can actually treat this condition by reducing the choroidal um, hyperpermeability. And you can see that after PDT treatment, this will reduce the choroidal thickness with resolution of the subretinal fluid. With that treatment, um, the prognosis is generally quite good. Um, usually the disease is self-limiting and the fluid will absorb in about three to four months. But uh, in a lot of cases, these patients can actually develop recurrences and in around 10 to 20 percent of these patients, they can develop progressive visual loss due to persistent serious retinal detachment, systolic macular degeneration or RP decompensation. So what are the treatment options we have for CSC? So the, the previously, we have applied a direct thermal laser photocoagulation, and more recently, we have been using a uh, uh, threshold micropulse laser to treat some of these patients. Um, more recently, transpapillary thermal therapy has also been used. And um, I'll also briefly touch upon systemic therapy and TV jet therapy, but um, the main bulk of my patients, they were uh, treated with photodynamic therapy. Dynamic thermal laser has been shown to be useful for reducing the um, amount of time for the resolution of fluid. However, in the long term, there was uh, no benefit in terms of visual gain. And there's also a potential risk of causing an iatrogenic CNV because this uh, model does not target the primary pathology of the choroidal hyperpermeability. Therefore, these patients are also at more risk of ha having recurrences. How about some threshold micropulse laser? So here you use a very um, minute uh, energy to cause the um, microenvironmental change for these patients' macula, and um, this resulted in quite good results in patients with focal leakage. However, in patients with diffuse RP compensation with no focal leakage, most of the patient not respond to this treatment and require additional PDT for the treatment. Another study also showed that it's useful in some patients with chronic CSC, but um, the risks, um, results were only uh, moderately uh, good, with only about 75% having to resolve fluid or improve fluid at last follow-up. This is a more recent paper published just last month. They randomized patients to substantial laser versus observation. So these patients were having acute CSC of less than one month, and you can see that patients, both groups, improved in vision, uh, and there was no significant difference in the visual gain in both groups, but uh, it showed that there was better contrast sensitivity in the laser-treated group. How about TTT? TTT make use of a very um, uniform size laser to deliver, 
deliver a substantial fulvial burn, and the um, hypothesis is that it can act like a conventional laser by raising the temperature and do some endothelial apoptosis and vascular thrombosis. And was shown that it might be effective in some cases. However, one patient developed a fulvial CMV in this series. Another series published last year, they performed what is called graded TTT. And patients were initially treated with a sub threshold TTT of about 60% of the um, threshold for 60 seconds. If the patient had uh, persistent fluid at one month, then they increased the power by about 20% to perform the retreatment. With this kind of protocol, they found that uh, um, resolution of CSC achieved in about 80% with uh, improvement of uh, three or more lines in 50%. Systemic therapy like ketoconazole, which are anti uh, which has uh, anti glucocorticoid activity, actually showed that there was no, no significant benefit in visual uh, acuity. How about anti VGF therapy? We are now injecting lots of anti VGF in various CNEs and also in macular edema cases. So it might work for these cases because um, there has been shown to be some choroidal lobular ischemia in patients with CSC. And using Avastin, um, in this uh, randomized trial, it was shown that comparing with low-fluence uh, PDT, uh, there was no significant difference in vision between the two groups and also no uh, significant difference in the retreatment be between the two groups. However, another uh, study showed that um, the resolution of a leakage was not very good in patients treated with bifacizumab compared with um, laser. And the mean change in vision for laser was plus six letters for uh, observation or or, um, or a vesting group, there was no significant improvement in um, the vision, and therefore the author said that, that there was insufficient evidence to recommend it, um, anti regia therapy for CSC. Another paper also showed that uh, using Venibusumab, it um, might result in faster complete resolution of fluid, but there was no significant difference in vision and central fulfill thickness at six months. We sometimes still use um, anti regia therapy in cases of CSE, in particular patients with CSC secondary CLE, and we've shown for quite good results uh, with significant improvement in vision in these patients. For example, this patient, you can see a CNV uh, due to secondary to uh, CSE, and this patient responded very well with um, um, one or two injections of anti regia agent. So for the remaining of the talk, I'll focus on PDT for CSC because this actually can target the primary pathology of CSC and might be the most effective therapy we have. So we can either use the standard protocol like the Tapman VIP studies or the modified protocols. So using the standard uh, PDT, this, these studies were published back in 2003 and showed show that uh, these patients had quite good resolution of fluid. We also looked at the patient's diameter of the choroidal vascular after the standard, um, standard uh, PDT treatment. You can see significant reduction in choroidal vascular di diameter following treatment. But there are some problems with the conventional PDT. For example, you get a transient facial loss, transient multifocal ERG imp impairment in the uh, amplitude, with also choroidal ischemia and infarction being some serious uh, adverse events. So we, in patients with CSE, we need to have a high safety profile, and therefore we modify the protocol. We can either change the laser energy, dosage, duration of infusion, or timing of energy. And people have used half-fluence PDT, basically halving the uh, laser energy applied, and showed some good results. Mo most recently, this paper published in Retina showed that um, patients' vision improved from 40 letters to 44 letters at 12 months, and with 100% of eyes having resolution of fluid on spectral domain OCT. About uh, three eyes had recurrence and required second PDDT treatment. In Hong Kong, we have been using this half dose uh, for the porphyrin um, protocol with um, a slightly changed, uh, we also changed the infusion timing slightly to in, in order to enhance the treatment effect of and the safety of this uh, therapy. And we've been using this since 2003. And um, we firstly looked at patients' uh, short-term results and showed very good results at one month with, with uh, most patients having significant visual gain. So you can see here, after treatment, there was no significant reduction in macular uh, ERG, focal, um, multifocal ERG at um, four days, and at one month there was a significant improvement with um, the amplitude as well as in vision, and there was complete resolution of fluid uh, at the macula. So we then look at patients with chronic um, CSC, and um, it was shown that patients also had significant improvement in vision and as well as in reduction in the central fulvial thickness at one year.
We then look at um, acute CSC from a randomized control trial, and, and it was shown that patients um, who received this treatment had significant visual gain. And you can see, comparing with placebo, patient at 12 months had a significantly better uh, visual acuity, as well as significantly thinner uh, uh, central fulfill thickness at one year. This was also shown to be a significant um, in terms of the objective multifocal ERG findings. Most of our results were basically focusing on the short-term results, so now we look at the long-term results and also show that it's quite effective. So we retrospectively review patients um, who were treated with this um, half-dose PDT uh, protocol compared with the control observation group. So over 100 cases were recruited, and uh, the mean uh, duration of follow-up was about uh, 70 months. So you can see the baseline demographics of the two groups were comparable in terms of age, gender, duration of uh, presentation, as well as duration of follow-up. So for the PDT-treated group, patients had a mean gain of one line at the last follow-up, and this was statistically significant. For observation group, the patients had a mean loss of minus um, point, uh, three line, and uh, the change in vision was not uh, statistically significant. And in terms of final visual outcome, you can see patients treated with PDT has significantly better, um, best corrective vision, uh, also significantly better mean change in vision, as well as um, uh, reduced number of episodes in terms of recurrence. So looking at recurrence rate, patients treated with PDT only 20% developed recurrence, whereas patients who were observed, 52% had recurrence during the follow-up period. And patients treated with PDT were significantly less likely to have recurrence of CSC. And this was um, shown to be significant on the LOGMAR test uh, in the Kaplan-Meier survival analysis. In terms of our safety, we did not encounter any systemic complications. There was no ocular complications such as secondary CMV or choroidal ischemia following half-dose PDT. So we think that PDT with half those very is beneficial treatment outcome, especially with the long-term benefits showing in terms of the visual improvement and reduced recurrence of the CSC. So just to conclude, um, I've uh, previously illustrated uh, various treatments for CSC, uh, but most of the um, studies were not randomized controlled trial, and it's therefore very difficult for us to com compare the effectiveness. Uh, treatment like subthreshold laser can, is only effective for focal leakage and for pa patients um, treated with PDT with reduced dose of vetoprofen appears to be the best treatment outcome uh, in terms of both chronic and acute CSC with focal and diffuse leakage. Thank you very much.